Well, whenever I first introduce myself to somebody, I always tell them that I didn't actually grow up here in Canada. Who else didn't grow up in Canada? Anybody else? Okay, Chris, shout it out. Where you grow up? Come on. No? Shai Oshola, where'd you grow up? Nigeria. Anybody else not grow up in Canada? Were you the only ones? Okay, so I was actually born in Canada, but at a very young age, we moved down to the United States where I spent most of my life. I actually grew up in Florida. Now, when people hear Florida, I know typically you think of SeaWorld, you think of the beach, the sun, Disney World, and everything. That's not typically what I think of when I think of Florida. When I think of Florida, a couple of things come to mind. The first one is hurricanes, all right? So it barely ever rains in Florida, but when it does, it rains for like five minutes, and so it's not even a big deal. You don't even get dressed up for it. It's just going to go pass away really quickly. But every once in a while, there'll be a hurricane. So a couple times in your year, you're boarding up all the windows to your house because there's going to be like a cyclone outside. It's, it's crazy. And so it's kind of cool. You get the day off from school, but it's not as fun as a snow day because you can't go outside. You'll get struck by lightning, right? So you should probably stay inside, but that's not much fun either because the power's out. You can't play video games. You can't watch TV. You're pretty much just stuck playing Uno with your family. It's like it's not that much fun. And another thing I think of when I think of Florida is just flatness. There's no hills, there's no mountains, nothing. It's straight flat. So you don't get to see any of the amazing, beautiful mountains that we get to see here in BC. And the next thing that I think of when I think of Florida are bugs. Who hates bugs? I hate bugs. Bugs are disgusting. They're the worst thing ever created. And the good thing about being in Canada is that it's pretty cold most of the year. We don't really have a ton of bugs, maybe in the summertime. But in Florida, they're year-round. They're everywhere. They're your roommates. They're your neighbors. It's just a part of life. And there's some really weird bugs in Florida. You got your usual ones. You got your fire ants. You know, you got your mosquitoes, your cockroaches. But there's this bug. It's so weird. And everyone doesn't believe me when I tell them about this. So I brought a picture. It's called the love bug. Let's put up a picture of the screen. Now, this is what a love bug is. It is literally two bugs stuck together at the butt. I'm not joking. They don't start out like this. And then they find each other and they somehow get stuck together and they're flying around just connected at the butt. It's super weird, but they're all over the place in Florida. It's, it's, it's disgusting. But probably one of the worst bugs of all are spiders. I hate spiders. Who, who hates spiders? Spiders are absolutely disgusting. They're the worst thing ever created. In fact, I don't believe that God actually created spiders. I believe they came after sin entered the world. They're not. They're from the devil. Spiders shouldn't exist. And I decided I would, I would collect some of the worst photos of spiders for your enjoyment. So I hate this one. But like, they're hairy. They're long-legged. They're gross. They're slimy. Let's this is what their face looks like. That's disgusting! Ah! Imagine going into the bathroom and seeing a giant spider on the toilet. No, thank you. Let's take that down. I don't want to see that anymore. Spiders are absolutely disgusting, and they're all over the place in Florida. Now, for me, if I see a spider, like, it's gross and everything, but if I see, like, a spider on my wall, I'm like, okay, cool. That's your wall now. You stay there. I'll be over here. Just don't come near me. Don't even, don't even get anywhere near me. And we're okay. Like, we'll just live in the same room together. But that's your side. I won't even touch that area. Right? The problem comes when I turn my head away and I turn back and the spider is gone. That's when it becomes a problem because you don't know where it is. For all you know, it could be right behind you, and I feel like it's got its fangs just already, like, chomping down on my neck. It's disgusting. I hate spiders. So I have to get my little sister to come in and kill the spider for me. And then she just looks at me, and she says, you're not a man. And she's right. I struggle. Spiders are disgusting. Spiders are gross. And growing up, spiders was just an every, everyday part of life for me growing up in Florida. And the, one of the worst things about spiders is when... You don't even see the spider, but you see a cobweb, right? When you see a cobweb, you know that there's a spider in your room, but you don't know where the spider is. You just know that it's been there. Cobwebs are the worst. I would, you know, you're having a great day, and then all of a sudden, boom, cobweb. 
and you think, there's a spider in my room right now. I'm not okay with this. And I would always freak out. Growing up, I would get a broom and I would like swipe away the cobwebs. I would get rid of those cobwebs. I don't want to see those cobwebs anymore. The problem is they would come back, right? The next day there'd be a new cobweb. And I remember growing up being so frustrated, so confused. Why are these cobwebs keep coming back? Why do they keep showing their face everywhere? And I'm, and I'm getting rid of them, but then the next day they're back again. Well, I didn't realize, because I was a dumb, stupid kid, that cobwebs aren't the real problem, right? The problem isn't the cobwebs, the problem is the spider, right? If you don't kill the spider, or sorry for you animal lovers, if you don't collect the spider and release him freely outside, I'm just kidding, spiders deserve to die. Kill every spider you see. If you don't kill the spider, what's going to keep happening? The cobwebs are going to keep coming back. Cobwebs aren't good, right? Cobwebs are a problem. They're gross, they, 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 they look bad, they collect dust, they're dirty, but they're not the issue. The issue isn't the cobwebs, the issue is the spider. You see, if you don't deal with the spider, the cobwebs will always keep coming back and back. If you don't kill the, co the spider, the cobwebs will just keep coming back. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't just have cobwebs in my house, I also have cobwebs in my life. You know, I have stuff in my life that pokes its head up that I don't like, that I wish I didn't do, behavioral problems, stuff that, you know, it, 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 they're, they're these problems, they're the disgusting things that you're just like, I wish I didn't do it, but I still do it. And, and I have cobwebs in my life, cobwebs of, of pride, cobwebs of anger, you know, maybe you're here and you have a cobweb of like some sort of an addiction. Maybe you have uh, uh, cobwebs of, of complaining or criticizing or lying. There's these things in our life, these behavioral problems that we wish we didn't do and we always try to swipe away at them. We think, I just need to deal with this problem. For so long, I tried my best to deal with these issues in my life. For so long, I tried my best to deal with these problems, but it it, it was useless. All I was doing was swiping away at cobwebs. Oh, maybe you're here and your only exposure to Christianity has been people telling you that you have to be a better person and that you're such a bad person so you just need to go to church more and read your Bible more, be a good person, strive for more, be, do better, work harder, and then maybe God will love you. Maybe that's your only exposure to Christianity that you just have to be a good enough person, that you need to reach a certain level and then God will love you. For so long in my life, that's what I thought it was about. I would just try harder and do these good things in hopes that God would love me. But just like cobwebs, they're not the real issue. And these things in our life that we try to deal with, these, these addictions, these, these, these behavioral issues that we think are the problem aren't the real problem. They're cobwebs. And just like cobwebs aren't the problem, the spider is the problem. In our life, we need to deal with the spider. Even if you manage to be a really, really good person, you still have the damage of your past staining the heart, the walls of your heart. So I want you to hear something today. The cobwebs in your life are not the issue. I want you to hear something today. Stop trying to be a good person. Stop trying to be a good person. Instead of trying to swipe away at cobwebs, I want you to do this. And this is our only point of today. If you're taking notes, write this down in big letters because this is so important. Instead of swiping the cobwebs, I want you to kill the spider. Everybody say, kill the spider. Stop trying to fix your life. Stop trying to swipe away at things that you think are the issue, that you think are the problem. Because all you're doing is swiping away at cobwebs and you'll never be good enough. Instead, kill the thing that's causing those issues. Now, I, I have my own place. I, I live in a little basement suite in Poco. I love my basement suite. It's nice and cozy, just for myself. It's awesome. But one thing I don't really like about my basement suite is my sink. My sink is pretty gross, okay? I, it, it's super embarrassing, but it does something really weird that I wish it didn't do. See, no matter how clean the sink is, no matter how good I wash all that stuff down the drain, you know, after I wash the dishes, no matter how clean the sink is, every once in a while, randomly, and I don't know what causes this, I start to hear the pipes creak and move. And all of a sudden, I hear from the sink, 
water bubbling up in my sink. And it just bubbles a little bit of water to the surface, whatever was in the drain, and then it just goes back down. And it's so embarrassing when I have people over and they see that and I'm like, uh, I don't know what's going on. It's just so awkward. But one of the worst parts is that it will literally bubble anything that was in the drain, right? So if, if that morning I had eggs for breakfast and I washed the dishes, a little bit of egg got down the drain, it would bubble that egg back up to the surface. It's disgusting. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is when it bubbles stuff up to the surface, that's not mine, right? So I, like, I'll get back from work one day and, and, and I'll look in the sink and there'll be the smallest little piece of broccoli. And I'm like, wait a second. I don't eat vegetables. What is that doing in there? That's not mine. It's disgusting, right? But no matter how well I clean the sink out, no matter how well I push everything down the drain, these things start to bubble back up to the surface. Now, I've got stuff in my own life that I try to push down the drain. i got stuff in my own life that I try to push down and keep down. But every once in a while, it bubbles back up to the surface. And I'm sure we can all relate. Maybe you, you have an anger issue, right? And you, and you push that down. You think, I'm just not going to be angry anymore. I'm just going to deal with this in a better way. And you think it's dealt with. And then your family does something to tick you off. And all of a sudden, that, you, that bubbles back up to the surface. And it just comes out. Maybe you have an issue, maybe you have an addiction to pornography and you think, oh, I, I, I've pushed that down the drain. That's dealt with. And then all of a sudden you get tempted and it bubbles right back up to the surface. Jesus interacted a lot with these guys named the Pharisees. These Pharisees would have been the religious leaders of the day. They would have been your pastors. They would have been your preachers. And when it came to cobwebs, these guys were spotless. You wouldn't see a cobweb in their house. They were so clean. They made sure their house was, they made sure their lives were perfectly free of cobwebs. But just like my sink bubbles stuff back up to the surface, the Pharisees started to see stuff bubble back up to the surface in their life. Stuff that they, that they didn't want others to see. And what Jesus does is he comes along and he says, man, you Pharisees, you think you're so good. I mean, these Pharisees, they would, they would memorize the entire Old Testament. They would follow every law to a T. No mess ups whatsoever. Their house was spotless of cobwebs. And Jesus comes along and he comes into their lives and he says, yeah, your house looks great. Look, there's no cobwebs. Oh, hold up. Did you see this cobweb that you tried to hide from me? That cobweb of pride? This cobweb of, uh, of self-righteousness? This cobweb of greed that you're trying to hide from us? You put on this show that you're so good and yet on the inside, you're looking down on other people because you think you're better than them. On the outside, you put on this show that you're so good, but you're just self-centered. And Jesus comes along and he starts to call these people out because they were trying to deal with the issues of cobwebs. And this is what he says to them in Matthew chapter 23. He says, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you're so careful to clean the outside of the cup in the dish, but inside you're filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee. First wash the inside of the cup in the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. See, Jesus comes along and he says, you've cleaned up the cobwebs, but you're feeding the spider. See, Jesus did not come to clean up cobwebs in your life. I really want you to hear this today. This is so important. Jesus did not come to take you from bad to good. Jesus came to take you from death to life. I'm going to say that again. Jesus did not come to take you from bad to good. He came to take you from death to life. He doesn't want to clean up the cobwebs in your life. He wants to kill the spider that's causing it. And that's what Jesus's life was all about. Jesus says the issue isn't the external things. It's not your behavioral issues. It's not the, the, the problems that you do. It's actually this inner issue in your life. It's the spider that needs to be killed. Now you might ask, well, okay, what is the spider then? Well, the Bible talks about our, our, our main issue being the, our sinful nature inside of us. You see, as we've done wrong, we've, we've racked up this moral debt, right? The, this, this, this debt of all these wrong things that we do. And so if I come along and I steal your bike, you want me to pay for that bike, right? You're going to go to the cops, say, hey, man, this weird-looking guy took my bike, and I, I want him to be, get arrested or fined or whatever. And you're okay with that, right? You want me to get punished for the bad thing that I did to you. And in the same way, our sin also deserves a punishment. The wrong things that we do deserve a punishment. And what is that punishment? Well, Romans 6 says this. 
It says, for the wages of sin is death. Now, this is so much more serious than just like a physical death. The Bible describes this death to be like a spiritual death, a complete separation from God. And you might think, well, who cares? I don't want to be around God anyway. Well, think about it. God is everything that is good. God is everything that is loving. God is everything that is joyful, peaceful, everything that is good in this life. And being separated from him for eternity means you're separated from everything that is good, everything that is joyful, everything that is loving, and all you're left with is pain and torment. And this is what our sin, our moral debt has racked up. This is the price that needs to be paid. And so Jesus coming down to the earth and dying on the cross actually accomplished something. And you might think, I don't even know why Jesus died on the cross. Jesus taking, uh, dying on the cross was him taking the punishment that we deserved. Our moral debt that we had racked up was paid by him on the cross. That cross was meant for us. That punishment was meant for us. That death, that separation from God. But Jesus took it on himself. He paid that moral debt. He killed the spider. And that's why the rest of the verse that I didn't read to you yet can say, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, Jesus didn't come to clean the cobwebs. He came to forgive you of your sin. He came to kill the spider in your life. Religion will tell you that you need to clean up the cobwebs of your life. Swipe away the things out of the issue. Work harder. Be better. Read your Bible more. Go to church more. Right? Pray a bunch. If you just do enough good things, if you strive and strive and strive and work harder and harder and harder, maybe God will love you. Jesus comes along and he says, look, you can't reach that level. Right? There's a moral debt that you can't pay. You can't be good enough. You can't work hard enough. Nothing you can do in this life can outweigh the bad things that you've done. But he says, you can't do it, but I can. And so Jesus lives this perfect life and yet takes the punishment for our sin. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 2, it can say this, that God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done. So none of us can boast about it. And that's the beauty of it. See, it's nothing that you can do. Jesus says, I've already done it. The only question is, are you going to accept it? Are you going to accept that forgiveness that he wants to offer you? Are you going to let him kill the spider in your life? And you want to know what the best part about all of this is? When you've killed the spider, the cobwebs are a lot easier to deal with, right? Once the spider is gone, the cobwebs become a lot easier to deal with because they won't come back up again. Jesus says, clean the inside of the dish, and then the outside will become clean also. It's, it's this transformation where he starts to do a work on you from the inside, and it starts to affect your behavior on the outside. But it's not a behavioral fixing problem where you're like, I just need to be better, and then God's going to love me. No, God loves you. Now be better. That's what the gospel is about. That's what Jesus came to do in your life. When Jesus deals with your inner issue, your moral debt that you've racked up, the outside starts to change as well. So today you need to answer this one question. Do you want to go through your life continuing to swipe away at cobwebs? Do you want to go through the rest of your life trying to fix the things in your life that you think need to be fixed? Do you want to go through your life thinking, if I just reach this level, if I just get this much successful, if I just get this many followers, if I just get this amount of money, then that's going to bring me fulfillment. That's just swiping away at cobwebs. Do you want to spend the rest of your life searching? Do you want to spend the rest of your life looking for things that you think will bring you fulfillment? Striving for more, striving for better, striving for more holy, because you won't reach it. There's a spider in your life that needs to be dealt with. It needs to die. But you can't kill it yourself. For so long, I thought I could get through life swiping away at cobwebs, making it look real nice. Look how good of a person I am. It's not the issue. The issue is the spider. And look, killing the spider it won't make everything in your life perfect. There's still cobwebs that you got to deal with, but it won't be swiping away those cobwebs in vain. 
it because the spider is gone. See, Jesus wants to deal with the root of our problems. He doesn't want to put a band-aid over a, a gunshot wound. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to try and fix something that isn't the real issue. He wants to deal with what what really is plaguing your life, what really is drawing you away from him. And he kills the spider in our life because he loves us. See, Jesus took the punishment for my sin and your sin on the cross because he wants a relationship with us. But he's not going to force you into that relationship. He's not going to force you to be close to him. But it's a free gift if you want it. Will you accept that relationship today? Will you let him kill the spider in your life? Because only in Jesus is true fulfillment and freedom really found. So why not choose to trust him today? Why not choose to stop your striving and simply accept the gift he wants to offer you? That's why I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to accept this gift of forgiveness that he wants to give you today. So I would just ask everybody would bow their heads and close their eyes.